And going on to the next question, um, this is dealing more with culture, and it is how can online Russian educators use culture to build the classroom community and foster a fun and positive online environment? Uh, Larissa, if you'd like to start, please. Oh, of course, it's very important. Yes, the, nothing can be done if there is a mistrust between students too in the classroom. Um, so, of course, we have to spend um, time at the beginning to get to know each individual student. Um, and with the programs that I taught, um, usually there is a survey sent um, to find out, you know, some things when students answer questions um, and even interview, like a short interview um, talking about interest and hobbies. But this is for me to know uh, the students, but also for everybody to know each other. It's important, right, to um, get to know your classmates as well. Not just the teacher knows students, but the students have to uh, know each other. Um, and so beginning, of course, uh, finding uh, what is common. I like this uh, Venn diagram. It could be uh, done in, in rooms when students are kind of making a double bubble, what's what we have in common, uh, what's our uniqueness. And they have been involved in conversation and then uh, coming up with a, like a graphic organizers for groups or even maybe giving a name of a group or something that they have to agree upon. Um, and also when we go to different topics and well, right last two years, it's been difficult in a Russian language classroom. Um, so we have to make sure we talk about the very uh, hot topics, I would say, um, not um, involved in a personality, right? So we talk about something, but not about personal things. It's it helpful for me to use analogies in the history too, um, when we talk about culture, right? We start with the ancient, ancient Rus, or we talk about perestroika. This is my... Um, favorite topic and find a lot of parallels that we can actually discuss past and discussing uh, the uh, present at the same time but kind of having a little bit of distance um, because families and you know students might have a very different opinions and it's not something that we can solve and write in class we don't want um, you know to to have this political debate in class so it's not um, what our purpose is. However, we want to um, have this class culture and, and learning how to accept a different perspectives. Again, analogies of a sport um, or, or music, a sport's usually good or music, like a different taste in music. And we have a debate. Okay, well, you know, who is the better? Uh, what musical style is the better, hip hop or like country music? It could be different things. It's not it could be personal too for some students, but not um, as uh, painful if it's uh, connecting to some uh, groups that they um, belong to or something like a family, something from a family coming to the classroom. Um, or sports, right? What is the best sport? Could be heated debate. That's what we want. We want some provoking, some uh, some feelings about it, but we don't want to, you know, step on something that we can't deal in the classroom. Yeah. Um, like sport, what is American football? How, what what do you think is American? So, and you can see the different opinions, right, um, about that. Um, also, it's important that no matter uh, what, but all different levels, all different backgrounds, everybody has to have the voice. Um, again, setting up the norms of a communication. And for the teacher, even uh, when I'm online i have all these different sometimes i don't see all the uh, you know screens because there are too many then i have to have like my own uh, row here and i say okay i ask the students i ask the students so i need to like ask him or her so kind of making sure that i everybody has voice and you know have the same level of participation nobody's forgotten there um so it's important too and when I know what students like, I have to make sure I put it in a, uh, in a language learning too. So if everybody um, likes uh, soccer, then we, of course we're going to speak about that. So something that they're interested in. Maybe I put uh, somebody who's expert in this to talk about this and have a presentation or a lot of chess players. Okay, the chess players can have a presentation about 
you know, uh, Karpov or Kasparov. So somebody like a famous um, uh, Russian chess player. Um, in a summer camp that I had this uh, summer, I had uh, a student who was really into these old uh, instruments. Um, and she was very, very quiet. She didn't want to like participate in any discussions. But then when there was a topic of a musical instruments, she actually prepared beautiful presentations. She brought uh, the old uh, violin. I forgot the, the name of this instrument. It was like 200 years old to show and tell about this. And she just blossomed and, and her lang language just really, um, she prepared a presentation about what she really likes. And then she had this different, so everybody after this view her different shoes. So she's not like not talking at all, uh, but she actually could talk and speak about the subject that she likes. So I think our role as educator is to find the sparkles for everyone who can actually come up out of their bubbles and speak about this and bring this culture of uh, all the voices are heard um, in a language classroom. I think we're powerful. Uh, <laughs> mediators to do that and then um, we'll all learn something from each other. Hello, oh, Lisa, that's such a cool success story that totally made my day hearing about the student this quiet and shy and then finding that spark, something she loves and then she wants to share that with the other students. That just totally warms my heart and makes my day. Thank you so much for sharing that. And again, same question, this one dealing um, with culture. And the question again was, how can online Russian educators use culture to build the classroom community and foster a fun and positive online learning environment? Evgeny, if you'd like to chime in, please. Yes, thank you. And thank you, Larissa. I think Spark is good and actually would like to have a political debate in my classroom. And if the students are ready for it, if there is enough kind of a, a collegial atmosphere and friendly, why not? Why not talk about politics in a, in a friendly, um, kind of a calm way. This is something we we need to um, go back to, because I think at some point we could. And, uh, uh, and if it also, of course, it depends on age and the question uh, that you pose it, but I think we should definitely try a little bit uh, and um, have tr tr try um, introduce debatable topics in, to our students. And for me, online uh, teaching became uh, an actual good window to to the world and to the world of Russian speakers, real people that I can bring to my classroom through Zoom. And I, I know a lot of my colleagues uh, are still inviting their friends, their colleagues, they. I don't know, um, uh, more or less famous people, um, directors, musicians, just uh, uh, anyone who, for whom Russian is a, a native language or maybe they achieved a high level of proficiency. And I think that's, um, for many students, they would be the, they would be the first person besides you, if you're a native speaker, a real Russian speaker they would speak to, and that would be so meaningful and so interesting. And again, we can use Zoom tools such as chat. Uh, if if my my guest speaker is giving a little talk or or talking to students, I, I serve as a kind of a, a life um, a caption device and uh, provide um, um, glossing and words that student may students may not know uh, in the chat so um, everybody can kind of like keep up with what people are saying I think that's that is really uh, really meaningful something we should be using a lot more in a regular classroom and on online certainly provides opportunity for like maybe kind of a mini group conversations uh with with someone or or a large group conversation um and i want to addre actually address um uh I forgot whose question was uh Dar daria uh no julia's question about um uh Ukraine and uh, the war was uh, the war was Ukraine because I think that kind of go, brings us back to culture and what we what we teach and what we 
um, uh, avoid doing. I think in my classroom, Julia, answering your question directly, I kind of certainly do do less that pertains to the government of of Russia. Um, uh, and the, this kind of, uh, if we could make fun of Putin riding a horse or some something that was kind of a mildly amusing to us, this this is out of my classroom now. Um, but I'm also kind of uh, thinking about, okay, so I need to be teaching about Russia and maybe have more responsibility to teach about why why this is happening and the the causes and what what happened in the you know multi-century history of Russia before that you know has has consequences now so that's why for example I started teaching a history of USSR or cultural history of USSR trying to explain uh the, the the mentality of Russian people, the mentality of the Russian government figures, and how it led to uh, 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 the war today. So that kind of a uh, um, bringing more uh, nuanced understanding to my students, so they know the context and they know why why this is happening. Uh, that what changed in my classroom. I'm not sure how it, it's help, it's helping me build the community, but certainly uh, I think we have a responsibility to kind of uh, to be to mark our posi an anti-war position, and I'm sure all of us here in this room share this and um, kind of uh, support our students who might feel, you know, vulnerable. Um, you know, Larissa, you talk about uh, a lot about. Uh, you talk a lot about heritage students, and some of them are, they do come from, you know, Ukrainian families and have some uh, uh, family in Ukraine. I think that that conversation where students kind of uh, know your position, they you know where you stand, you know where you're coming from. Um, that makes it makes it makes it uh, makes it makes a difference for them, and they would feel safer and kind of a. Uh, um, more protected uh, in a way in, in your classroom. Thank you, Evgeny. And you mentioned uh, bringing in a historical perspective. And I think for a lot of students, especially non-native speakers, um, that are non-heritage speakers that don't have that background, sometimes that can be important to take on um, some different perspectives and take a look at some historical things too. So thank you for that. Uh, we are very quickly wrapping up, um, but just to get to all of the panelists quickly, um, Olga, if you'd like to chime in, how can online Russian educators use culture to build the classroom community and foster that fun and positive, positive environment online? Thank you. And uh, Evgeny has already mentioned this. It's the use of the community, global community, local community, uh, native speakers of Russian and uh, the the carriers of uh, cultures uh, uh, from the countries in, uh, where Russian is used uh, uh, on a regular basis. So uh, definitely in our, uh, in our classroom, we use the native speakers. We zoom them in. Also, for example, uh, we created activities on Flip where I asked, uh, I use social media, my Facebook page. I recruited native speakers, my friends, friends of my friends. And they recorded, and they were from all, all different parts of Russian Federation, right? From different regions, also from different post-Soviet countries, from Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Belarus, uh, Ukraine, uh, Kazakhstan, like you name it, right? Latvia. And these native speakers, like I provided with a special prompt, and they recorded videos about their country. They had also to do like show and tell, introduce a small, like the, show an object that symbolizes their cult, uh, country, I explain uh, what it means, like to talk about the food and uh, talk about a little bit about geography, but I also guided them what exactly I needed. And because it was for novice students, I also asked, like, I, I had to, to, to kind of provide them with, uh, with instructions on how not to complicate the language. And uh, our students had to go, we posted them on Flip, 
And then our students had to interact with them. They had to go and find all these different countries, listen to a few of them, then respond, reply to them, uh, ask the questions. And uh, that was, I noticed that this was a very uh, um, uh, effective uh, activity because later on students became uh, interested in specific part of the of uh, of Russia or in a specific part of the post Soviet space because of the speakers. So, for example, uh, in we use uh, cultural projects as well. So it's almost like PBL. Some elements of PBL. Uh, we do a couple a couple projects throughout the semester, and students work in groups. And there is a specific, a specific uh, task they have to to explore, and I let them choose the region, right? It's like Russian speaking uh, region, whether it's post uh, post Soviet culture, post Soviet country, whether it's part of some uh, parts of Russia, maybe uh, I don't know, maybe Karelia, uh, maybe somewhere part of Siberia uh, or Dagestan. and then they explore and they explore, they explore hobbies, they explore the national cuisine uh, they explored uh, like national uh, for example clothing and like how people look their appearances and they created uh, infographics they created digital children's books online books for this as, as part of these projects they created cultural brochures and they also created like youtube videos like travel logs and stuff like this so uh, different formats for different uh, throughout the year and uh, that's definitely helped us uh, a lot to get to know more about Russian speaking cultures, especially cultures outside Moscow, cultures outside St. Petersburg. And it was student driven because students could focus on the part that they're interested to. So they could explore hobby, for example, something they, they like uh, active hobbies because they are maybe hockey players here in, in Pittsburgh. So then they will explore some kind of sport and hobby popular in Kyrgyzstan, right? So again, it was dictated by their own interests. And I found this connection to their own culture, to their personal background was extremely helpful to learn about other cultures. Oh, that's so cool. I love hearing about when students are able to kind of own what they want to learn about and explore their own interests, but also learning about other cultures too. Love that. Thank you so much. And then Heather, again, same question. How can online Russian educators use culture to build that classroom community and foster the fun and positive online learning environment? Um, well, I, I, I will give a short answer. And I want to say that's really difficult to follow what Olga just said. I mean, I think that is all fantastic. Um, I'm also uh, really trying to, since the war especially, can this ties into Julia's question, um, I'm really trying to focus um, on post-Soviet uh, spaces for our learners to introduce um, the learners to these places, what they are, and and um, guide them into into learning about the the various cultures in these 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 places. Because I mean, it's definitely not a homogenous space. Um, they are the cultures are are quite varied across the space. Um, and you know, part of the reason I do this online and in person is because yeah, our students, we can't send them to Russia or to Ukraine right now to study abroad. And this is a very practical uh, lesson, not just to promote community like in our classes, but to like prepare our students for, for study abroad, for using Russian abroad um, in the spaces that they, they can actually use it. Um, so uh, yeah, that's that's really what I'm, I'm trying to do right now in my classes. Um, I don't wanna, talk too much. I know we're like right at the end. Um, thank you. Well, thank you for that, Heather. And this has been perhaps my most favorite OLP series that we've done, and especially working with all of our fantastic panelists. And the crowd here has been amazing. Thank you so much to all of our participants for making this so great. I do just want to quickly draw attention in the chat that Issa put the song they sang in camp on uh, the link to that into the chat. So I will definitely be checking that out at the end of this if anyone wants to uh, check that out and bookmark that.